The Everglades is home to many different sounds, but what if I told you sounds like these were once commonplace? Florida was once home to not one, but two different species of wolf. And what if I told you today there's a good chance both of those species might still be roaming around on the mainland of Florida today. The two species, or rather subspecies of wolf we will be talking about today are the black wolf and the red wolf, both of which are different subspecies of Canis rufus, of which Canis rufus rufus still exists today in North Carolina in very low numbers, and Canis rufus floridiensis, the black wolf, can only be found in history books at least that we know of, though there's some good evidence supporting otherwise. But in order to talk about the possibility of both these species still being around, we need to talk about the koi wolf situation. And this is where things are going to get a bit confusing, so stay tuned. If you did not know, the United States was once home to two main species of wolf, the gray wolf and the red wolf. And during the 1900s, when both these species numbers became either very low or straight up extinct, the coyotes started taking over. Coyotes are a much smaller relative of both these species, and they're naturally a lot more adaptable than both these species, which meant that the coyotes basically spread from the western United States to basically all of North America. And during this process, a lot of the coyotes ended up hybridizing with the red wolves. And part of the reason why gray wolves are still more abundant today is actually because the fact that gray wolves will almost never interbreed with coyotes, while red wolves are very vulnerable to it. Because of hybridization with the remaining red wolves in the eastern United States as coyotes began to spread, they eventually took over creating the eastern coyote, which is mostly coyote with small remnants of red wolf DNA. This makes the identification of pure-blooded red wolves and hybrids as either koi wolves or eastern coyotes incredibly confusing. And for the sake of simplicity in this video, we'll be referring to a koi wolf as a 50-50 hybrid between red wolf or black wolf and coyote, and the eastern coyote as simply just coyotes found in the eastern United States. In other words, classification of canines is very confusing, and this video was insanely hard to research. So if you enjoy it, please like and subscribe so you can help my insecure ego and sanity. So let's start off with the allegedly fully extinct of the two species, the black wolf. While the Florida black wolf was once believed to be its own species, now we currently believe it is actually a subspecies of the red wolf that is entirely melanistic, though we know for a fact that both subspecies once lived side by side, similar to what we see today with the great blue and the great white heron, though sadly the black wolf became extinct in 1908. Or did it, as actually there was a sighting of one that was actually confirmed to 100% be a Florida black wolf about 30 years later in 1934 on a trail camera. This just goes to show how hidden these canines could be from the public eye. And as we're going to see, there's been plenty more sightings afterwards that are pretty credible. As of now, none of these sightings are 100% proven. This is mainly due to how complicated canine taxonomy truly is, as the eastern coyotes also happen to hybridize with the black wolves, creating a melanistic gene which could be spread to a lot of the eastern coyotes today. So no matter what, we do know for a fact that there's still some wolf DNA in our modern day eastern coyotes found throughout pretty much all of the eastern United States. But are there any pure-blooded black wolves left is the question. And to be honest, I think there's a good chance there is. The best way to distinguish a pure-blooded wolf from a coyote is the much broader head and shorter ears that are found on wolves, and we have found some sightings of melanistic canines out in the Florida wilderness that do fit this description. Sadly though, none of these reports are confirmed, and we can't exactly do eDNA testing either, as there are no known bodies of black wolves found in museums in which we could extract DNA from. But in spite Florida being the third most populated state in the United States, it still has plenty of incredibly remote areas in which animals such as the black wolf could still be hiding. To support just how elusive these canines could be, I go out into the Everglades every week looking for all sorts of cool crazy critters, and I've only seen a coyote maybe twice, and coyotes are known for being way less elusive compared to any of the wolves. So really, the idea of an all-melanistic canine being capable of surviving very far away from human civilization and not being spotted in Florida or possibly even other parts of the world to really be not that hard to believe. And unlike true red wolves or gray wolves, it was actually believed that their black wolf was a lot more solitary, which might contribute to their more cryptic behavior. There's also been some reports that have actually been very well documented, even on TV, such as at the hit TV show Extinct or Alive, where there's a possibility 
that this unknown incredibly large canine right here depicted in the thermal drone is actually either a black wolf or a red wolf hunting some deer out in the middle of the Everglades. And even though the Everglades is pretty well visited, the places that are only visited include a few sites, as the Everglades is over a million square miles and can very easily hide creatures such as the black wolf. And there sure have been plenty of sightings outside of the Everglades too, including Okeechobee, Indian River Lagoon, and there have even been a good number of sightings in the many of the different springs areas just north of Orlando. Many people have even suggested that the possibility of Florida's quote-unquote Black Panther sightings aren't actually coming from panthers, but are actually coming from still surviving black wolves that are simply being mistaken for other creatures. But overall, it is very hard to make any sort of concrete conclusions about any of these cases, as a melanistic coyote can be pretty hard to tell apart from a black wolf. Especially when you remember the fact that a lot of these melanistic coyotes actually do likely contain black wolf DNA, though it's likely just trace DNA and not actually a koi wolf hybrid. Though when you have koi wolves or rather eastern coyotes looking like this, it's pretty hard to deny the fact that there's definitely at least some black wolf DNA in them. But are there any pure-blooded black wolves left in the state of Florida? Or did they truly go extinct in the 1930s? To be honest, I still think there's a really good chance that there are some black wolves still out there. When you have coyote hybrids looking like this, there's a good chance they likely came from a pure-blooded black wolf somewhere down the line that was pretty recent. So I think there's still a good chance that there could be at least a few pure-blooded black wolves still out there, likely in areas that coyotes simply can't reach. And odds are that humans are going to have a hard time reaching these locations as well. But at least that gives hope to this extinct species possibly still being able to be seen, again by human eyes. If you do think you've seen a pure-blooded black wolf in Florida, the best way to tell a black wolf apart from a melanistic red wolf or coyote would actually be the fact that black wolves have much shorter legs and a stockier build with a much more box looking face and shorter ears. And usually they're a solid black based on pictures, while melanistic coyotes tend to be more of a brown. But without DNA testing, you could never know for sure. But what we do know is that Florida definitely does have another kind of wolf, the true red wolf. And while they are in Florida, they're not exactly in the place you'd expect. This is St. Vincent Island off the panhandle of Florida, and believe it or not, there are 100% red wolves there. Just like the black wolf, the true red wolves once roamed all of Florida, but eventually went extinct in 1921. Due to a combination of hunting, poisoning, and of course some interbreeding with coyotes that were eventually spreading into the eastern United States. And while they did become extinct throughout all of the eastern United States, at least the pure-blooded ones did, we were able to keep some of them in captivity that were pure-blooded and eventually create breeding programs where we reintroduced them into the wild in both North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains, which sadly failed, and St. Vincent Island, where they basically teach the red wolves how to become wild again, while also doing some very important research on them. Eventually, the goal is that these wolves will actually be reintroduced to North Carolina, where they could finally be truly wild and roam around all of North Carolina's wilderness and play an important part of the ecosystem. As right now, these red wolves are isolated to St. Vincent Island, with some of their pups, when they're eventually fully grown, eventually being transported to the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge in North Carolina, where they could finally enjoy a truly wild space that isn't isolated to a single island. But are there any red wolves still remaining on the Florida mainland? I think there is. With photos such as this being taken in 2011 in Vero Beach, Florida, which clearly depict a red wolf, I think it's almost undeniable that there's still at least a few stragglers around. And there's also been plenty of other sightings made by some pretty credible people throughout Southeast and even parts of West Florida. Some of these sightings even being made in more urban areas such as Riviera Beach, which is fairly close to my house. Who knows, maybe I should check it out in a future video. But with noises like this, being heard throughout Florida, it is no wonder why people still think the red wolf is still around. 
as in spite of their similar appearance, a pure-blooded red wolf is still pretty distinct from a coyote, as they're much more bulky, taller, and tend to be more social, being found in family packs and having that very distinct call. But just like with the black wolf, the line between what counts as a true red wolf and the coyote does get pretty blurry. A great example of this is the Galveston ghost wolves that you could find off the coast of Texas. These are actually a hybrid population of red wolf coyote hybrids, with them being about 40% red wolf and 60% coyote. And they actually happen to form packs just like they would if they're red wolves, and they also happen to have a very similar call to that of the red wolf. And as far as we know of, they seem to prefer breeding with each other over the actual coyotes found in the surrounding area. And it should be noted that while red wolves are more vulnerable to breeding with coyotes, they still prefer to breed with their own kind, and oftentimes will only hybridize with coyotes when they are injured, oftentimes by the hand of humans, or when they are in a population which is mostly dominated by coyotes where they simply just can't find a mate of their own species. This fact unfortunately makes reintroduction efforts and the idea of us still being able to find a pure-blooded red wolf out there on the Florida mainland or any other part of the U.S. besides North Carolina or St. Vincent Island to be a challenging prospect. But with red wolves having once lived basically across all of the eastern United States, in addition to sightings occurring not just outside of Florida, but in the Smoky Mountains where they were once reintroduced to, and even sightings occurring all the way up in the Northeast, which is pretty fascinating to say the least. But if these are true red wolf sightings or not remains to be confirmed. But we do know that there still are some red wolves out there, of course, in the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge. And I think our focus shouldn't be on finding the extent extinct ones, but rather preserving the ones which we know are still there, as red wolves are truly an amazing creature. And unfortunately, with their known numbers in the wild being down in the 30s, we really do need to protect them. This species already went extinct in the wild back in 1980, and we don't want that happening again. So regardless of if they're on the Florida mainland or not, what we should be doing is focusing on protecting the ones which we know for a fact are still alive and roaming freely in North Carolina. As red wolves act as a really important predator to the ecosystem as they help to manage the spread of diseases and overpopulation amongst prey animals, such as deer and larger rodents. Plus, how could you not love these guys? I mean, aren't they adorable? And the red wolf, in addition to the black wolf, don't even pose a real threat to humans as they've never been documented killing a single person. Even the gray wolf, which is way more abundant today, has still only killed a few people in the United States in the span of the past 250 years. So really, we shouldn't be trying to persecute these guys as our ancestors did, but instead we should be trying to protect them as a valuable part of our ecosystem and environment. And while I do think there's still a good chance there's some pure-blooded wolves hanging out on the Florida mainland, Sadly, this theory still remains to be confirmed, and as of now, the best we got is probably the likelihood of there being some koi wolves left. But I'd still like to think that we could protect the rest of the wolves that could be found throughout the United States, regardless of it the gray wolves, red wolves, or some other weird in between. What matters is that we protect our native canines for years to come, and so future generations could enjoy them as well. Who knows, maybe in future times, we could actually start reintroducing wolves to the Florida wilderness. And who knows, maybe we could see images like this be recreated once again on the Florida prairies or scrublands, or maybe even near my home in the Everglades. I just really want to see some wolves back in the wild in Florida, and I'm really excited by the prospect that they could still be around, or that we might see them again here in the future. So regardless of if there's some remnants of black or red wolves still hanging out in the Florida mainland today, what matters is that we still have some wild wolves left in the U.S., and that we're still making an effort to protect these amazing creatures. And if you love these awesome animals the way I do, I'd recommend you like and subscribe so you can learn more about these incredible creatures.